Esther. I'm Nick. And we are Fouch Family Off Grid. We have a new still with our name on it that was made by one of you, which we love. We love artists, so thank you for that. We do a lot of things on this channel, and although we do love sitting down to chat and answer questions and things like that, doing our homesteading mistakes is not our favorite. It's a little bit like eating our vegetables. I would rather do some fun vlog and uh, Nick would probably rather just build something. Absolutely. Um, but we've been told a lot of times that this is helpful and so this is our way of reaching out to people who are homesteaders or who want to be homesteaders, sharing information, kind of just getting vulnerable and getting out there in case some of this is helpful to someone. Could be. It's possible. So it's in two sections, and I'll go ahead and put the times down in the um, description so you can move around if you want to. We're going to take the first part to talk about some very tangible mistakes and things that we just wouldn't do again and talk about how we fix them. But we're also going to take the second part to talk about some mistakes that are more um, in the philosophical realm, perhaps, in terms of attitude and worldview. And we really want to get into that stuff because we are thinkers and we really see our limitations and our challenges in that way. Um, those, those big picture kind of how you think the world works things can be extremely limiting. But let's start with the easy ones. So we did a poll on our community page here on YouTube. We, we chose five of our biggest mistakes and let people vote to see which one was the biggest. And Nick is going to juggle the entire time. No, what? Wait, wait, did I not tell you that? You didn't tell me. I'm it. kidding. I didn't bring my <laughs> meat cleaver. I just totally made it up. Okay. He does juggle, but he's not going to juggle today. for this time. Uh, okay, so uh, our biggest uh, homesteading mistake, number five. We built our yurt, which was the place where we lived before we moved into the house. We built our yurt on the north side of a row of trees. This only got 7% of the votes. I was hoping it would get more because I think it was a really big mistake. It certainly turned out to be. Um, you know, when we first set up the yurt, of course it's a temporary setup, um, which uh, turned out to be three years of being the primary resident, uh, which is more than we thought it was going to be. Um, but we also came in and were trying to do sort of as little uh, work, I guess, as possible, but also have very little impact. So we put it in a place that was already sort of big enough and level and, you know, didn't take a lot of work to get it set up in that spot. But we paid for it over time. If you ask the kids what was the hardest thing about living in the yurt, they'll tell you temperature. It was hot in the summer and it was cold in the winter. Well, of course, in a canvas tent, you're going to be dealing with temperature extremes. We worked our tails off to make that space as comfortable as we could. I couldn't keep plants because it would freeze solid if you went into town during the day. Um, so we really were, we were struggling with temperature extremes and we just weren't using the site to our advantage. So the, the problem with being on the north side of a row of trees is that you're actually going to be hotter in the summertime and colder in the wintertime. It's the reverse of good passive solar design. Because for us in the northern hemisphere, the sun in winter is coming on an angle from the south side. And so it's blocked by those trees. So we're not, we're not getting any winter sun because it's blocked by those trees. But in the summertime, the sun is arcing actually from the northeast to overhead to the northwest. And so it's never blocked by those trees. In the summertime, we have no shade. That isn't entirely true. We have, there is some shade from the other side as well. But the tall row of trees on the south side, we would never do again. Absolutely. So there's plans to recite that, that building. Uh, we may retire into that building. Um, but uh, using what we've learned about passive solar to site it well and do the foundation well and all of these other uh, things, when you, when you have a second chance, of course you're going to change a few things. And the good news is that the little house, the house we live in now, is rocking the passive solar. We have all of our, our great big windows on the south side, and this little addition that we're building right now that we're calling our mudroom is going to be entirely heated by passive solar 
and we're feeling really confident about our, our skills there. So we're going to be doing some, some uh, mass, uh, a, a concrete floor and a, a brick wall, brick against the wall, veneer is that what you call it? Yeah. Brick veneer so that we can absorb that heat and keep the space warm with the sun alone. Right, with a little bit of thermal mass inside catching the rays of the sun, it'll, uh, that'll go a long way. All right, the next, with 10% of your votes, we fed an entire field of potatoes to the elk. Mm. This really was a lapse in judgment on our part because... It was like 150 row feet, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is a lot. And so what this, what this mistake really was, was fantasizing that we were going to be able to do more than we could at a pretty early stage. Right. So we had always intended to uh, do a fence line on, our, on that property line that would have stopped that path. Um, but I didn't tell the elk about that at all. And so they came right in. Um, <laughs> So I may have had every intention to put up a fence, but I didn't do it in time, certainly. Um, and so we just should have not made ourselves vulnerable in that way, I guess. Right. But to me, this is not as big a mistake as, the, as positioning the yurt wrong. Because what we lost from that was uh, a, some pounds of seed potatoes and the effort of the planting. A couple days work or whatever. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, the elk didn't harm us and they, there wasn't a comfort issue there, but it was clearly an error on our part. Yep. How are we correcting this? Well, we are working eventually on a fence line, but we've also been gardening in smaller plots in places where we move and can be all the time. We have a great dog, her name is Fia, who's great at helping to chase away the elk and to protect our crops. But she can't do three acres 24 hours a day, um, especially because elk are huge animals and they're not scared of dogs. Um, so, but if we plant our, our food close to us in smaller amounts, we're able to actually get that food and that's a better choice than reaching too high and ending up with nothing. Absolutely. Okay, so next, with 12% of your votes, Nick dropped a tree on our woodshed. I did. It was a big one. Uh, it was a very large tree. <laughs> uh, so I was already a little skittish about um, the, the cut. It was a little rotten in the bottom, and um, I just didn't do it quite right. But there's two mistakes here, because one was a poorly constructed and poorly sited woodshed. Uh, we never really liked the way that it functioned or where it was, um, but it was built sort of in a hurry and out of necessity to, to cover all of this wood that we had. Um, and that was our very first winter in the yurt. When I threw that up, we had our big wood supply there. Um, but it was just not in a good place and it wasn't attractive. It didn't, um, it was not built to last. So, um, yeah, it was some bad choices early on. And then it was poor technique cutting the, cutting the tree as well. Um, but I know now uh, how to complete that cut to, uh, to direct the tree a little better. It was leaning downhill, and I just I didn't reach far enough around the back side of it. So where I what hadn't cut, it, it drifted in that direction. So... Um, clipped the corner of our woodshed and smashed it to bits it did. Like a giant came. He said, that, wow, a giant came to visit. And yeah. Stepped right on the woodshed. Yeah. But it, it makes for a story, and uh, nothing was harmed that we, that we liked. So. Absolutely. And it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't a great permanent structure. It didn't hurt anybody. It didn't hurt any of the more valuable things. So uh, lesson learned. Okay, with 19% of your votes, Esther left dog food out and fed a bear. Yeah. Big mistake. And um, I think for me, coming right from the city, although I was, my lineage was, was a country girl and I was raised by a person with a lot of these skills, I've lived most of my life in the city. And I think you get the impression that a bear is kind of an act of God. Like, oh my gosh, there's a, there's a bear, and, and that's this inexplicable thing that you have no control over. Um, but in fact, bears are extremely predictable, and they respond to their environment. 
We have black bears here, not grizzly bears, and it's completely possible to coexist with black bears without getting yourself hurt. Um, it takes a little common sense. And having a large quantity of food that the bear liked right outside my door was not the good move there. So we've, we've corrected this by having a, we have a trash shed now where almost anything that a bear would like to eat is securely locked up. And our dog also helps with this. A really good, bold, barky dog. Dogs and bears don't like each other very much. Very helpful. And the bear, their bear population still moves around us, passes by, but we've not ever again had the experience that I had that first time, which was a bear setting up camp in front of my front door. Nick was out right. of town and I'm hanging out in my canvas tent with my three tiny children. Thinking, and this the, is not a good right. situation. And the bear is just waiting outside wondering when more dog food gets poured out. Right, exactly. Um, <laughs> and that's what they're after, is they're after your, those easy calories. So if you, if you police up all your easy calories, the trash and the dog food and chicken food and, and everything else, then you, you shouldn't have a problem because they're just not going to work that hard to go after your other stuff. And we should clarify that it depends on your location and how many bears there are and how hungry they are. But it, the, the mistake that I made was thinking that I couldn't control what the bears do. The bears are just kind of this mysterious force of nature. Um, Whoops, we moved in with bears. Right. You can do a lot to keep yourself safe from rather predictable animals. And here's the number one of the five big mistakes we gave you to vote on with a whopping 51% of your votes. We built a house without dealing with the drainage around it. That is true. We didn't build a house without considering the drainage. We knew that was an issue, but it was also, um, it was also, you know, it's like my well-intentioned fence. It doesn't do anything if you don't actually get to it. Right. So we, um, we're on the side of a hill, and so we're always going to have uh, drainage issues, much like we're always going to have the, uh, the issue with um, siding for, uh, for solar gain. Uh, we're always going to have these things. Um, and so the, the house site needs to have water carried from the uphill side of it around and away um, and we didn't do the final grading around the house before we moved in and we didn't put in a foundation drain before we moved in. So uh, this year, uh, about a year later, we backed up, we dug out down to the foundation, put in a foundation drain and did all the damp proofing on the on the concrete um, and uh, bear, and filled it back in and did all the final grading and uh, I think we're going to be in much better shape this year. We haven't seen any damage but when we dug in there there were roots on the foundation that were chasing water so we did have water sitting against it um, but uh, I think we're in a much better situation now and uh, I guess it's the, almost the same lesson. Don't don't put it off. Don't delay. Keep those all those steps in order, or um, or you're going to pay for it in effort or some sort of loss. Yeah. Do it. I smell like it. <laughs> Is that your form of entertainment? None of these 10 mistakes are things that we really completely regret in the sense that we're clearly on a journey, we're having the adventure of our lives, and all of these things are building up to greater knowledge and making each day better than the one before. So maybe the greatest mistake and one that we're not making yeah. would be to let regret get the best of us.